For function f of x to be differentiable at the point x equals c, the following conditions must be met. f of x must be continuous at x equals c, and the limit of f prime of x as x approaches c from the left side must equal the limit of f prime of x as x approaches c from the right side. If you're not sure how to do the three-step process for finding continuity at a point, I'd encourage you to go watch my video on that before we dive into this lesson because this involves a lot of continuity. If a function is known to be differentiable at a point, it must be continuous at that point. But if it's known to be continuous at a point, it is not necessarily differentiable at that point. And the way that we say that is that differentiability implies continuity, but continuity does not imply differentiability. This first graph is neither continuous nor differentiable at this point. It's not continuous because we have a jump discontinuity. And we know that if a function is not continuous, it's not differentiable. This is an example of a function that is continuous but not differentiable at the point x equals 3. It is continuous, but it's not differentiable because we have what's called a corner in the graph. If we think about the slope of the tangent line from the left side, it's not the same as the slope of the tangent line from the right side, and one of our conditions is that the limit as x approaches c from the left of f prime of x, or the slope of the tangent line on the left, has to equal the slope of the tangent line on the right. So even though this function is continuous, it's not differentiable at x equals 3. For a function that is differentiable but not continuous, this is not a situation that can exist, because we know that if a function is differentiable at a point, then it must be continuous at that point. Differentiability implies continuity. Here's a function that is both continuous and differentiable at the point x equals 1. It is continuous because the different parts of the piecewise function line up, and it's also differentiable because the slope of the tangent line on the left side is equal to the slope of the tangent line on the right side. We have a smooth pass off from the quadratic to the linear function there. So this one is differentiable and continuous at x equals 1. Here are more examples of functions that are continuous but not differentiable. One situation is when we have what we call a corner, and this is when you have an absolute value function. We have a corner at x equals 3. Even though the function is continuous at x equals 3, the slope of the tangent line on the left is not the same as the slope of the tangent line on the right, so the function is not differentiable at x equals 3. Another situation is when we have what's called a cusp, and that looks like this. It is not differentiable at x equals 0 because even though it is continuous, the pieces do line up, the slope of the tangent line from the left is not the same as the slope of the tangent line from the right. Another situation that is continuous but not differentiable is when we have a vertical tangent line. So this is the cube root function, and right at x equals 0, if we were to sketch the tangent lines, we'd have a tangent line like this, a tangent line like this, and our tangent lines are going to be getting progressively closer to 0, which is a vertical line. Right at 0, we have a tangent line with a slope that is undefined. We have a vertical line. So therefore, we can say that this function is not differentiable at x equals 0 because we have a vertical tangent line at x equals 0. The endpoints of a function are neither continuous nor differentiable. So at x equals negative 1 and at x equals 2, the function is not considered continuous because even though it's defined for the value x equals negative 1, there's not information about what's happening on the other side, so we can't say that the function is continuous at x equals negative 1. Therefore, we can't say that it's differentiable at x equals negative 1, because in order to be differentiable, a function must be continuous. Additionally, we have information about the slope of the tangent line as we approach from the right side of this function, but we have no information about what the slope of the tangent line might look like on the other side. Therefore, the function is not differentiable at x equals negative 1 and at x equals 2, which is our other endpoint. Determine whether each graph is differentiable, continuous, both, or neither at the indicated x value. At x equals negative 8, we have a jump discontinuity in the graph, and we know that when a function is not continuous, it is also not differentiable. So this one is neither differentiable nor continuous. At x equals negative 4, we have a cusp in the graph, and at, when we have a cusp, that is not differentiable. However, it is continuous because the pieces do line up at one point. So it is continuous but not differentiable. At x equals negative 2, the function is continuous, and it is differentiable because we don't have a corner, a cusp, or a vertical tangent line. At x equals 2, we have another corner or cusp situation going on here, and when we have a corner or cusp, that means that the function is continuous but not differentiable. 
on this next graph at x equals 1, this is a situation where we do have a smooth pass off from a quadratic to a linear. The slope of the tangent line on the left side is the same as the slope of the tangent line on the right side at x equals 1, so this one is continuous and differentiable. At x equals 3, the function is continuous, but it's not differentiable because the slope of the tangent line on the left is not equal to the slope of the tangent line on the right. Determine whether the function is differentiable at x equals 4. If it is differentiable, find the value of the derivative at x equals 4. Here's our function. The first step when, we're, when we are determining differentiability is to determine whether the function is continuous at x equals 4. And the first step in our definition of continuity is to find f of 4 and make sure that that number exists. So I'm going to plug in 4 to this top function. Next, I need to find the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of f of x and the limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of f of x to make sure that both of those exist and that they are the same. So for the left side, I'm going to use the top function. So I'm finding the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of 1 half x squared plus x minus 4. And now I can use direct substitution and plug in 4. And I get 8. Now for the limit on the right side, I will use the bottom function. So I'm finding the limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of 5x minus 12. And now I directly substitute 4 in. This one is also equal to 8. So this means that the limit as x approaches 4 from the left side of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of f of x, which is equal to 8. And that is also equal to the limit as x approaches 4 overall of f of x. In part 3, I need to verify that f of 4 is equal to the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x. I know that f of 4 is equal to 8, and the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 is also equal to 8. So this means that our function is continuous at x equals 4. However, this is just the first step in finding differentiability at x equals 4. So now to specifically determine differentiability, I'm first going to need to find f prime of x. So to find f prime of the top part of the function, the 2 will become a coefficient, and then we drop the power by 1, so it's 1 half times 2x, or just x, and then plus 1, since that's the slope of my linear equation, and 4 is a constant, so I don't worry about that. That is when x is less than 4. And even though I have less than or equal to 4 up here, I'm only writing less than 4 for, for now, because what I'm trying to test is whether f prime of x can exist at x is less than 4. Sorry, I wrote f of x earlier, but this should be f prime of x. Now to find the derivative of the bottom portion of f of x, it's 5, because 5 is the slope of the linear equation, and 12 is a constant, so that has no impact on the derivative. So on the bottom portion, the derivative is 5 when x is greater than 4. So now I have my function for f prime of x. At this point, I need to make sure that the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f prime of x is equal to the limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of f prime of x. So to find my left-sided limit, I will determine the limit as x approaches 4 from the left of x plus 1. Use direct substitution, 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. Now to find my limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of f prime of x, I will find the limit as x approaches 4 from the right side of 5. And that is also equal to 5. So we know that f of x is also differentiable at x equals 4 because the limit of f prime of x as x approaches 4 from the left side is equal to the limit of f prime of x as x approaches 4 from the right side. Since the problem also asks us to find the value of the derivative at x equals 4, that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to go down to my f prime of x, and now I can say that it is when x is less than or equal to 4, because I just proved that f of x is differentiable at x equals 4, which means that f prime of x does exist at x equals 4. So now I'm trying to find f prime of 4. I can plug 4 into my top function here. f prime of 4 is equal to 4 plus 1, which is equal to 5. 
So that part of my answer will be that f prime of 4 is equal to 5. Determine whether the function is differentiable at x equals 0. If it is differentiable, find the value of the derivative at x equals 0. So remember, my first step in finding differentiability is determining whether the function is continuous. And my first step in the continuity definition is finding f of 0. f of 0 is equal to negative 0 plus 1, or 1. My next step in the continuity definition is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x needs to equal the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of f of x. So when I'm looking at the limit on the left side, I'm going to plug it into this cosine x function. And the cosine of 0 is 1. When I'm looking at 0 from the right side, on the right side I will use negative x plus 1 as my function. Plug in 0. And that one's also equal to 1. So the overall limit as x approaches 0 of f of x equals 1. In part 3, I need to verify that f of 0 is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x. And since both of these are equal to 1, I found that in step 1 and 2, I can just say that it's equal to 1. This means that f of x is continuous at x equals 0. Now to determine differentiability, I'm going to need to find f prime of x. So on the top, the derivative of cosine x is equal to negative sine x. So it will be negative sine x when x is less than 0. And the derivative of this bottom function is negative 1. And that is when x is greater than 0. And keep in mind, even though I have x is greater than or equal to 0 in my original f of x function, when I go to write f prime of x, I can't write that equal to yet because I don't know if f prime of x is actually defined at x equals 0. That's what I'm trying to figure out when I'm doing this problem. So now I need to find the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side of f prime of x. This is the limit as x approaches 0 from the left side of negative sine x. The sine of 0 is equal to 0. Now I'll find the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side of f prime of x, plugging it into negative 1, and I get negative 1. So unfortunately, 0 is not equal to negative 1, so this means that my function is not differentiable at x equals 0 because the limit of f prime of x as x approaches 0 from the left side is not equal to the limit of f prime of x as x approaches 0 from the right side. If I look at my graphs of these two functions, this is the cosine curve and this is negative x plus 1, this makes sense because we see that it's not a smooth pass off between this cosine function and the linear function. The slope of the tangent line as we come in from the left side is not equal to the slope of the tangent line as we come in from the right side. Therefore, the function is not differentiable at x equals 0, even though it is continuous at x equals 0. Determine the values of a and b that make f of x differentiable at x equals 1. To solve for a and b, we're going to follow through our process of continuity and differentiability, and we will see where we need to plug in the variables. So first, we need to assess the continuity at x equals 1. First step is to find f of 1. This is equal to 12 times 1 minus b, or 12 minus b. Step 2, we will find the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of f of x. And we'll plug in 1 for x. And we see that this also needs to equal 12 minus b. Now we'll find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f of x. And we see that this is equal to a plus 4. So we know that the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right side needs to equal the left-sided limit. So from this, we know that 12 minus b needs to be equal to a plus 4 for f of x to be differentiable, because in order for f of x to be differentiable, f of x needs to be continuous. And in order for f of x to be continuous, the limit must exist at x equals 1. In the third step, f of 1 needs to be equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x. So 12 minus b needs to equal this, needs to equal 12 minus b, needs to equal a plus 4. These equations are going to be useful once we have an actual value for a and b, which we will find when we're determining the differentiability. To find differentiability, we need to find f prime of x. So for the top part of the function, we'll bring the 2 out to the front, and that will become a coefficient, and then we'll drop the power by 1. So for the top part of the function, its derivative will be 2ax. And we don't worry about the 4 because that is a constant and its derivative is 0. And this is when x is less than 1. 
for the bottom part of the function, we know that b is a constant, so its derivative is going to be 0, and the derivative of 12x is equal to 12. So it is 12 when x is greater than 1. Now, we know that the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f prime of x needs to equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of f prime of x. So for the left side, we will find the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of 2ax, plug in 1 for x, and we get that it needs to equal 2a. For the right-sided limit, limit as x approaches 1 of f prime of x from the right side, we need to find the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of 12. And this is equal to 12. So we know that our limit of f prime of x as x approaches 1 from the left side needs to equal the right-sided limit, so 2a needs to equal 12. Now we get that a is equal to 6. And now we can plug 6 for a back into this function that we got up here. And we get that b is equal to 2. So if you are on a multiple choice and you were trying to find a and b, this would be the point where you could stop. But if you are on an FRQ, you need to do a little bit more explanation and justification. You need to say when a is equal to 6 and b is equal to 2, f of x is differentiable at x equals 1 because it is continuous at x equals 1, and then give some more mathematical justification for why it is differentiable. When a equals 6 and b equals 2, f of x is differentiable at x equals 1 because it is continuous at x equals 1 because f of 1 is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x, and it's also differentiable at x equals 1 because the limit as x approaches 1 from the left side of f prime of x equals the limit as x approaches 1 from the right side of f prime of x. Determine the x values of a and b that make f of x differentiable at x equals negative 1. First step is to go through our definition of continuity. So f of negative 1 is equal to a times negative 1 minus b, or just negative a minus b. So at this point, I know that the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left side is equal to negative a minus b, and the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the right side is 2. So negative a minus b needs to equal 2. The problem is, I don't know the specific values of a and b. They could be anything. So to determine those, I'm going to continue moving through my differentiability definition. But first, I need to say that f of negative 1 is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x, which means that negative a minus b equals negative a minus b equals 2. Now I will find f prime of x. For the top portion, f prime of x is going to be equal to negative 6x squared, bringing the 3 out to the front as a coefficient and then dropping the power by 1, and that is when x is greater than negative 1. And for the derivative of the bottom function, b is a constant, so its derivative is 0, but for a, that's a linear equation with slope a. So my derivative is a when x is less than negative 1. At this point, I will find the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side of f prime of x. That's the same thing as the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side of a, which equals a. And now the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of f prime of x, that is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of negative 6x squared, plugging in negative 1 for x, and I get negative 6. So in this case, I know that a needs to equal negative 6 because the limit of f prime of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left side needs to equal the limit of f prime of x as x approaches negative 1 from the right side. Now I can go plug this value back into this equation to solve for b, and I get that b is equal to 4. So again, if this were a multiple choice, you could just stop here and pick the correct answer, but if it was a free response, you need to do some additional justification. When a equals negative 6 and b is equal to 4, f of x is differentiable at x equals negative 1 because it is continuous at x equals negative 1, because the limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 equals f of negative 1, and because the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right side of f prime of x equals the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left side of f prime of x.